Hey hustlers, welcome back to my channel. If this is the first time you're seeing me, then hello, my name is Jasmine, aka Jazz Hustles, and I am a 20 year old Amazon seller. I started selling in the beginning of this year and I'm still going at it. As you can tell by the title, I'm going to be doing another video on how to send your products to Amazon. In my previous video of where I showed you guys, it just wasn't looking good. Like I was literally recording my computer screen with my phone but now that i know how to screen record my computer it's going to be easier for you guys to see obviously so let's get to this video if you are new to this channel make sure to subscribe because why wouldn't you make sure to like it up but yeah i just want to get straight to it so let's do this so we're just on our Amazon seller dashboard. I know you guys see it says account is at risk of deactivation. That's only because I'm just updating my address and I need another postal code to be sent in the mailbox. So don't worry about that. We're up 100 in sales today. Slow. Yesterday was slow too. And November 11th and the 12th was pretty good. I had $800 days. The year November 9th, 297. November 10th, 329. Five, 72, 439. There's always gonna be slow days, high days. You just gotta keep going with your business, guys. You just gotta keep going, keep going. I already know my problem is because I haven't restocked on some of the products that I am currently selling. I already know my problem with that. So yeah, so what you're gonna do, you're gonna go to the three lines on the top right here. You're going to click inventory and manage all inventory. Now that you're on your inventory page, what you're going to do is check off the products that you plan on shipping out. You can ship out multiple products in one box, two boxes. You wanna accumulate like a lot of units. Just because remember, you have to pay for shipping to Amazon and I don't wanna keep paying for shipping, you already know. So let's just use these items that I've sold in the past that, are, that is currently inactive out of stock. In this case, let's do this book. Let's do this sports bra and let's do this skinny syrup. So we got three items. Let's pretend we're shipping it out. You're gonna click up here where it says action on how much you selected. And then you're gonna put stand replenish inventory. Then it's just gonna ask you that you've selected three listings. Are you ready to continue? You just put yes and continue. Now you're going to be taken to this page. This page is basically going to ask you how much units you have of each product. It's going to let you know here whether or not prep is required, if you have to put it in a poly bag, if bubble wrap is required, but in this case, none of these are required for prep. So if you've never shipped out anything before, it's going to ask you the ship from address. I'm not going to go up because then it's going to show my address, but basically the address that you plan on shipping from, that's the first thing that you're going to have to input. And then it's never going to ask again. If this is your first shipment, it's going to ask you that. After that, you are going to be going around here and it's basically going to ask you, who do you want to label the units? Do you want Amazon to do it or are you gonna do it yourself? I always label my own units because it is 55 cents per unit that Amazon charges if you want them to prep and label your units. I'd rather just do it on myself because these Amazon fees out here are no joke. I'm not gonna let them get more of my money, basically. So I got my printer, I got my poly bags, link in description of all the materials that you need. They will be in my Amazon storefront, but yeah. So that's all they're gonna ask you pretty much. And it's gonna ask you, it's actually going to let you know. Here, let me see if I can actually reset it. Restart, let's see, okay. So it's going to tell you to do this, right? If you go to where it says manufacturer barcode, that means that you're able to use the barcode that's already on the product and you don't have to print out an FNSQ label for it. But for this certain product, like the skin syrup, I'm not able to. So prep guidance. So you're always gonna put no prep needed, even if it's like sold as a set and you know it has to be in a bundle, just put no prep needed. I put no prep needed for every single thing. If it's glass, no prep needed. It's still going to let you know what actually needs to be prepped. So no prep needed save and yeah so let's just do that next you're going to be asked the units that you have for each product so let's just say i had two skinny syrups the expiration date so the expiration date always has to be ahead 105 days i'm just gonna put whichever day i'll put um october 15th if anyone's birthday is october 15th happy birthday october 15th Okay, then you put ready to pack. 
And you're really gonna do the same step for every single product that is in that shipment. Let's just say we had one book for these Adidas sports bras. Let's do three, ready to pack. So of course it's not asking for the expiration date for these cause there's no expiration date on them. But um, yeah, we can see here for the sports bra that we don't have to print out an F and SKU label for it. We are able to use the manufacturer barcode. It's most of the time when I'm shipping out apparel, most of the time I'm able to use the manufacturer barcode. Sometimes no, but sometimes yes. So now once we have ready to pack for every single unit, we're going to be pressing here where it says print all SKU labels. So we have a total of three labels that we have to print out. What I do is put thermal printing format. If you put it as standard format and you have a thermal label printer, it's not going to print out right. It's going to be messed up. Standard format is for if you don't have a thermal label printer and if you're just trying to print your labels out off of a regular printer, like an HP printer. But it's, it's definitely recommended to get a thermal label printer. And then you're just gonna put the width 58 and the height 32. And then you're just gonna click print all. And I have it automatically set up on my computer to just open up the PDF download for me and just open up. But for you, it's most likely just going to open another tab and then you have to download it to your computer and then open it up. And then after the file, print, make sure your printer is connected. And then you put two by one inches. So if you have a MacBook, you're not going to want to click one by two. You're not going to want to click 2.25 by 1.25. It's going to show like messed up and your, your labels would literally just get messed up. It has to be two by one. So if you have a MacBook, I'm not sure if this is for every computer, it did not have the two by one. So I had to make my own size. So what you do is go to where it says manage custom size. And then you just put, well, you do the plus thing and then width two inches height, one inch and then the margins all zero inches. You press okay. So now you have your untitled custom two by one and you don't have to do it ever again. It's just gonna be saved. So you just click that and these are what they look like. It also lets you know the name of the product on the label so then you don't put it in the wrong product. Then you just press print and you print it out. After that, you're going to cover the existing, you're gonna cover the manufacturer barcode of that item with the F and SKU labels that you just printed out. So for this sports bra, we would have to put it in a poly bag and you just want the manufacturer barcode to show. Let me see, I actually have an example. So these are just some Nike pants that I recently bought. There is no labeling required. I just had to show the manufacturer barcode and put it in a poly bag. Most apparel is best to be in a poly bag. It might not tell you sometimes, but just put it in a poly bag. So I just like making sure that the manufacturer barcode, let me see here. I just like making sure the manufacturer barcode is showing and that's pretty much it with that. So it, the sports bar would look just like this basically. Oh, and then I can just show you, this is like a product that I had to get sent back to me. This is basically what it would look like if you just had a product that didn't need any prep or poly bagging, you just put it right by the barcode it used to be at. So this is also another one that didn't sell for me. But here we just have the sold as a set label. This is for if you're trying to bundle an item. Okay, so luckily this product already came bundled up so it didn't have to be poly bagged. So all I did was just put the sold as a set label and then my F and SKU label because I had to print out a label for that. That's pretty much it with that one. Okay, so let's get on with it. Now we're going to pack individual units. And now on this page, it's going to ask you how much boxes you're going to be using. You can use a lot of boxes. You can use one box, you can use two, three, four, five. It does not matter. So I'm gonna just show you two examples. So let's say we only needed one box for the shipment. You're just gonna click everything will fit into one box. Confirm, you put the box dimensions and the box weight. And you want to make sure that the boxes that you ship out to Amazon is always under 50 pounds. You don't want to go over that because then you you will be charged extra for your boxes. And then for the box dimensions, you always want it to be under 25 by 25 inches. Let me just show you guys. You always want it to be under 25 by 25. And the box weight under 50 pounds. And that's pretty much it, confirm packing information. But let me show you if you had multiple boxes. So you click this option, you put how much boxes you're gonna be using. Let's just say I had two. 
and now you're going to be opening up something called a web form so this is what a web form looks like you're basically it's super easy you're just going to input how much stuff is in box one how much stuff is in box two the weight of box one the weight of box two and of course the box dimensions so let's just say i had two of the nike sports bras in box one let's say i had the other sports bra in box two and then it'll just like even it out and um let's just say we had zero skinny syrups in box one and we had all the skinny syrups in box two let's say we had one of the books in box one and zero in box two easy peasy then we're gonna weigh both of the boxes let's just say it was like two pounds five pounds and then you're gonna put the box dimensions of box one check it off if they are both the same size and of course check both off but if let's say box two is larger than box one you're gonna check it you're gonna uncheck it add another box dimension and then you just put the larger box size and you just check it and that's it pretty much super easy and now confirm packing information you will get this yellow warning most of the time. I get it all the time. You do not have to worry about that. All you have to do is, pr is press dismiss warning and confirm. And now confirm and continue. And now it's going to be looking for a fulfillment center. So it has found a fulfillment center. Remember guys that you cannot choose the Amazon warehouse to ship it to. You have to follow the warehouse that it says to ship to. So ship date is the day you plan on shipping it out. So not today, but let's say you wanted to ship it out tomorrow. I'm doing this video on Wednesday. So let's just say you wanted to ship it out Thursday. You press that and now it gives you the price of the shipment. So in this case, it's $10.83 to ship out those two small boxes. So with this, it's always best to use UPS because they are partnered with Amazon. So the rates are way cheaper. But if you wanted to use a different carrier, you always can. You just click here and choose the carrier that you want to use. One thing to keep in mind is that Amazon is not going to charge the card that they have on file for you for the shipment cost. They are going to charge your account balance. So let's say you just started off selling on Amazon and you have no sales and zero dollars in your Amazon account. All they're going to do is just take that and make it a negative number. So in this case, it would be negative ten dollars and eighty three cents if I'm a new seller. After that, all you're going to do is click accept charges and confirm shipping. I'm not going to do that because then it's going to, of course, charge my account. But basically, the last step is to print out your box labels. And it's basically the same thing with the two by one. They give you a PDF file to download to your computer. You're going to open it up and it's going to give you two labels for every box. So in this case, since we have two boxes for this example, there's going to be a total of four labels. So there's going to be a UPS label and there's going to be an Amazon label. Once you print it out, make sure it's four by six inches. Remember, it's the bigger one. Let me see if I can show you guys. So it's this kind of size, four by six. It's gonna be two for every box, remember that? So like I said, it's gonna be a UPS label and an Amazon label. Um, it's gonna let you know which label goes on which box by saying box one, box one, box two, box two. And then you put them both side by side on the boxes. You put your fragile labels on the boxes, whatever you want to do. Then you go to the UPS store or you can schedule a pickup from the UPS if you don't have a car, if you don't have a ride. I live near so much UPS store, so I always just drop it off myself. So once I go to the UPS store, I just tell them that I have a drop off. You don't have to pay anything because you already paid for the shipping on Amazon and you already have your shipping labels. And they just scan it in and they give you a receipt just like this. This, I always decide to keep these receipts even though I can track my shipments on Amazon Seller Central. I just always like keeping these sheets just in case. So I have literally all the tracking sheets that UPS has given me ever since I started selling on Amazon and I put it all in my little accordion. Look how organized I am guys. So we have store receipts, we have store tags because it's really important, quick tip, it's really important to keep the store tags that you're from Ross. Keep the store tags because let's say that your product does not sell well on Amazon. Um, Ross has like a 30 day policy. So let's say it doesn't sell well or um, a seller hopped on with the cheapest price at thousands of units and you're never going to be able to sell your units. Create a removal order and it's $1 fee per unit to get a unit sent back to you. And all you do is just make sure that you have the tags because the only way you can return it is if you have the full receipt and you have the tag attached to it. So you can just attach it with literally anything, a piece of thread, anything. So I keep these and if I sell it, I'm pretty sure most of the stuff that I've sold from Ross have actually sold. So I can probably be able to throw some of these out. But um, yeah, 
And by the way, I got this little accordion thing at the dollar store. It's really helpful. We love organization. See, it says invoices, receipts, and packing slips. So that's where I keep all of that. Um, it's also really good to keep those UPS tracking receipts because sometimes let's say that Amazon lost one of your shipments, you would have to try and provide um, evidence that you shipped out something. So you use that and it's really helpful. So um, yeah, like I said, you can track wherever your shipments are at on Amazon Seller Central. Let me know if you guys want a video on that, but it's literally super simple. It's gonna let you know on Amazon Seller Central once they received the units, once they started scanning it in, and once it's sellable. And if they have any discrepancies, then they're gonna let you know, let's say that you said that you're gonna ship out five units and they only got three units. You can always get reimbursed if you think that they lost one of your products during transit or in the warehouse. But yeah, um, this video is long as heck, but um, But I hope this video helped and the new sellers out there that want to start their Amazon selling journey. I know my previous video was trash, so don't go back to that one. But look at this one. I was a new beginner YouTuber, so do not mind me. If you got to the end of this video, comment the word shipment down below so I know you're serious about this business. And if you haven't already, make sure to follow my Instagram and my TikTok where I post on those every day. If you're also interested in purchasing my complete Amazon FBA guide where you learn literally everything about Amazon FBA, then the link is going to be in the description. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys real soon on the next one. Peace!